a pleasant day to you all. I hope I find you very well and everything is in place for us to start today's lesson. Today we are going to, first of all, summarize what we have done so far and introduce a little bit of some new things before we start uh, writing the work that you are going to write today. So uh, the first thing that we did is we looked at uh, windows, uh, windows and what we see here is the desktop, where when we talk of a desktop, we mean the first page that we see when we switch on our computer. So we can see here is the desktop and we have got the, what we see here, they are called icons. So we have got icons on this desktop. Uh, this one is an icon for, for Windows operating system. And, uh, uh, this, to be specific, is Windows 7 operating system. So uh, we have got what we see on the desktop. This one is a computer, for my computer, it's called an icon. This is a recycle bin, it's an icon. This is a folder that is found on the desktop. And the, what we find on the desktop at the bottom here, we call it a taskbar. But the taskbar has also this part. This part is called an, the notification area. The notification area tells us um, whatever that is active in our computer. So we can see that on this notification area, we have got the network here. And also this shows some, some of the programs that are there, the date and time, whatever. And then this taskbar has got some programs that are already running. You see that the program is already running, it should be highlighted in blue. So basically this is all about the desktop. So we want to talk about so many features of a desktop. So here we have got the desktop background, background is the background image that is used for decorating the desktop. So it is similar to the table clock with the designs that we use to decorate the table top. These designs can be taken from the list of options already available or can be created in paint, the software, the, the software that we have, which is called paint. We can make a desktop background or a picture. Also, we may use uh, photographs stored in the computer as desktop background. So you can see that here we've got some backgrounds that are really are already changing here. So we learned about all these things uh, last time about how to change the desktop, the desktop background and work with it. How can we create a desktop background? Right. You may create a new desktop background when we use the paint, isn't it? We go and select the start all programs, accessories, then we go on to paint. Then we start making our, 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 our image, our design. We click on paint button, drop down arrow and select as desktop background, isn't it? The image is displayed in the desktop as a desktop background. So like what we, we did this one before, then we can change the desktop background as follows. We right click on that desktop and then we click on personalize option in the shortcut menu. So you can see the personalization window that appears. Then we click on desktop background option. Then we choose our desktop background window which appears. Then we select the desired background from the given list. So double click on the image or click on save changes. You will return to the personalization windows. So we click the close option and choose the chosen background will be seen on the desktop like we've spoken about it. So now I want to talk about the screen saver. It is the image that we see when the computer is left idle for some time. So you see it. It disappears as soon as you click the mouse or press any key. You can select screen savers 
or registered in Windows or creating new screen savers, isn't it? The idle time after which the screen saver will be displayed can also be changed. These are steps for us to use a screen saver. Right click on the desktop, then after right clicking, click on uh, personalize option from the shortcut menu. The personalization window appears. We click on the screen saver option, the screen saver settings window will appear. Select the screen saver of your choice from the screen saver drop down list. You can also specify the time after which the screen saver should appear in the white box and mark the box on resume display log on screen. So then we click OK or apply. We then close the personal, personalization window by clicking the close option. We also spoke about setting date and time. So every computer has got a built-in calendar and clock. It keeps on working even if the computer is shut down. You remember we talked about the what happens with the CMOS battery, which is the one that makes the computer continue to work even after you have shut down the, the computer. We talked about the CMOS battery. It is the one that makes sure that the calendar and the clock continue to work even if you no longer have electricity and you've shut down the computer. So this one is displayed on the right end of the taskbar. You can change the time and the date by clicking on it on the taskbar only. Click on the change date and time settings option. The date and time dialog box appears here. Here you can change the date and time, isn't it? Right, we also spoke about files and folders. Remember that files, a file is a collection of related information. There are different types of files depending on the type of information they contain. For example, image files, program files, text files, music files, isn't it? And we spoke about them and we talked about how they are named and the primary and secondary names of the files. Primary name is the first name of the file. It can be any name given by the user. So I can give the names. The secondary name is the extension of the file. For example, .docs, .bmp, .xl, .sx, etc. It is given by the program where it is created. It may vary with the application used. For example, if the file is created in Microsoft Word 2007, then it is a .doxy file. You see, if it is for Excel, it is a .xlsx file. If it is an image, it will have BMP. Folders are used to classify files in a computer. A collection of related files can be grouped in a common folder. The folders are also known as directories. <clears throat> Remember that I talked about it. Windows Explorer works as a manager for the Windows. It manages and organizes files and folders. Thus, it is also known as the file manager. You can delete, you can see, we can copy or move files and folders with the help of Windows Explorer. Remember that. We spoke about it, so we're just revising to, for us to be able to see how these things are done, isn't it? Then if you want to open the Windows Explorer, you click on the Start button, then you select All Programs, click on Accessories, then you click on Windows Explorer, then the Windows Explorer window appears, which is set to the library view. When you talk of by default, we are saying, uh, it, that is what happens when you open it by default. That is what happens unless if you change it, isn't it? <clears throat> you can also double click on the computer icon on the desktop to open Windows Explorer with computer as the default view. Remember I said the default means it's something that is there when the computer was manufactured. The window is divided into two panes, the left, and the right, as shown here, I'm, I'm showing you there, the left and the right. So if you want to create a new folder, you open the Windows Explorer. In the left pane of the Windows Explorer, click the folder where a new folder needs to be created. 
For example, click on documents in libraries. You can see. Then click on the new folder option in the menu bar, as I'm doing right now. Then a new folder with the name new folder appears in the right pane. Give the desired name to this new folder and press the enter key. Or you can click somewhere else, not on any document. If you want to delete a file or a folder, to delete a file or folder, follow the steps I'm going to give you below. In the right pane of the Windows Explorer, select the file or folder to be deleted. Click Organize drop-down list delete option. The delete folder dialog box appears. Click yes to confirm deletion. Like what I'm doing, or right click on the folder required to be deleted. Select delete from the shortcut menu. Then the delete folder dialog box appears. Right When you are deleting in this case, you are going to be putting all your items in, in the recycle bin. The recycle bin contains all the deleted information. You can go to the recycle bin to retrieve or to take the document that you have deleted. Or you can go to the recycle bin to delete that item permanently. I've got a shortcut that you can also do. When you want to delete permanently a document, you press shift and delete key. You are going to delete it permanently too. Okay. How to copy a, fo a file or a folder? Right. Copying a file or folder means making a copy of the, of the original file either in another location without removing it from its original location. That's copying. Then select the desired file or folder in its respective location. After that, in Windows Explorer, click on Organize, Copy, drop-down list option. Select the destination folder either from the navigation pane or locate it through the address bar. Once again, click on Organize drop-down list paste option. So how do you move a file or folder to another folder? In the Windows Explorer, select the file or folder to be moved. You click on Organize drop-down list cut option. Select the destination folder from the navigation pane. Click on Organize drop-down list paste option in the destination folder to move the file or folder. You can also move the card file or folder into a new bar, into a new folder, sorry. Click on the new folder in the menu bar. Open the folder and then select paste from the organized drop-down list. How to change the name of a file or folder? Right, select the file or folder as I've shown here. Right click on the mouse. Select rename from the shortcut menu. The name of the selected file or folder will be highlighted with the pointer blinking inside the name box. Write the new name, like here, where it is the new folder, isn't it? Press enter key or click outside the file or folder. Accessories, this is um, something that is new, we have not yet done. Windows have got a number of standard applications referred to as accessories. Some of these applications such as calculator, paint, wordpad, notepad, etc. are very often used. These applications are simple and easy to use. To access any of these applications, click on start, all programs and accessories. There is a calculator. By default, the calculator looks like a real pocket calculator. It has a number of keys, memory keys, and standard map operations. You can use the calculator even with the help of the keyboard or mouse. But I want you to also go back to the word default. By default, we mean this is what you see without any alterations, isn't it? Right, the view menu allows you to use different programming capabilities like scientific,
programmer and statistical calculator. Apart from, you, apart from using the different types of calculator, the view menu provides the user with other useful features. The date calculation option allows you to calculate the difference between two dates in terms of years, months, weeks, and even days. The unit conversion option converts values from one point, from one unit of measurement to another. The digit grouping option on being selected groups the numbers typed on the calculator based on the international system of numeration that we are using. The edit menu allows the user to copy values from the calculator and paste it in another location and vice versa. So you may want to take this to another place, you can do that. The other accessory that we have is Paint. It's a drawing and painting program in Windows. Pictures that are drawn or edited in Paint are called bitmaps. This means they are stored as a grid or small dots called pixels. So uh, how quality a picture is, is determined by the number of pixels it has. If a picture has got very few pixels, it's not a quality picture. I'll give an example of um, a picture that is taken by my camera. Yeah, you can see the picture quality is not as good as how it is supposed to be. Usually, if it is with more pixels, it also occupies very large space in our computers. So I'll try by all means to ensure that the pixels on my pictures are very low. Paint consists of different drawing tools that help to create different pictures. So, <coughs> we will not bet. It's a basic text editing program in Windows. You can create, edit, and print a document file with simple formatting features. It doesn't do a lot of things. Just do this, very simple. Here you can also scribble notes and important points and save them for future references. We can work on only one document at a time in a notepad. We can save a notepad file as a plain text file. Then there's another one which is a WordPad. WordPad is a rich text editing program. It is capable of doing much more than not paint. And we can use it. But as compared to MS Word, the features are less. A file created in a WordPad can be a plain text file. .txt, a rich text format file, .rtf, a Word document file, .doxy, or an open document text file dot or dt. You remember we talked about this file extension, the secondary names. The formatting features are more advanced with the facility to insert an image in a document file. It's different from a notepad. We cannot do that. We cannot insert an image. We also have Windows Media Player as an accessory. It has several entertainment software, and an example is Windows Media Player. You can listen to audio files and watch videos with the help of Windows Media Player. You can also play CDs and DVDs using this application called Windows Media Player. This software also allows you to copy songs from CDs on your computer. It is a multimedia software. It is available in various versions. When you talk about multimedia, it means it can play different, you can play different types of data. How do we open the media? Windows Media Player, click on Start, select all programs, click on Windows Media Player, and then every Windows Media Player comes with some default music stored in the sample music folder of the computer. Please check out the way the default is I have straight before. Right. Um, I think. Um, as we speak right now, we have uh, looked at uh, various issues. We have looked at different um, things about our, um, our computers. So what I want you to do right now is you are going to write an exercise that I'm going to be telling you on Telegram. And I hope this video has been very helpful to you. Um, it is my hope that everyone is doing his or her work very well and please enjoy your day.
Thank you very much.